Unexpected visits now that she knows that she can depend on me. Alistair! Miss Smith! What does this mean, Sagamore? You never told me who you were bringing me to see. You said two friends. Well, Mr. Plendebland, we are pleased to see you. Won't you sit down? What's happened? What have you done to yourself? Everybody asks me what I have done to myself. I haven't done anything to myself. I suppose you mean this and this. They are what your wife has done to me. That is why Sagamore should not have brought me here. Oh, dear fellow, I really am most frightfully sorry. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Blenderbland? Come and rest yourself on this couch. Dear, dear. Well, we don't mind what Mrs. Fitzfassenden does. But I do. You are most kind, but I cannot claim the privilege of a friend and at the same time be the plaintiff in an action for assault and battery. Oh, yes, you can. There's nothing new about the situation. Now, do come and make yourself comfortable, Adrian. Well, very kind of you, and I really can't stand any longer. But I don't understand why Sagamore should have played such a trick on me. And, of course, on you, too. Well, the, the truth of the matter is that Blenderland won't be reasonable. So I thought you two might help me bring him to his senses. No use, Sagamore. £2,500 and costs. Not a penny less. Do not. It's ridiculous. <laughs> £2,500 and medical expenses and costs. And cab fare to the cottage hospital, I suppose. Hmm? No, I went in her own car. But now you mention it, I tip the chauffeur. Don't misunderstand me. It's not the money I mind. It's the principle of the thing. It's a question of honour, of self-respect. Yes, but how do you arrive at the figure? Why is your honour and self-respect worth £2,500 and not £2,500 millions? My brother... Got £2,500 from the railway company when an electric truck butted into him on the platform at Paddington Station. I will not let Epiphania off with less. It was an unprovoked, brutal, cowardly assault. I'm extremely sorry, sir, but Mrs Fitzfassenden is outside with the Egyptian doctor. What? I really did not expect her. You have allowed my husband to bring a woman to my hotel and register her in my name. You are fired. I'm extremely sorry, madam. I had no idea that the gentleman was your husband. However, you are always right. Would you like me to go at once, or shall I stay until you can replace me? I do not wish you to go at all. You are re-engaged. Throw them both out instantly. <laughs> your manager cannot throw Alistair out. Alistair can throw all of us out if he comes to that. <laughs> and as to Miss Smith, this is a licensed house, and she has as much right to be here as you or I. I shall set fire to the hotel if necessary. Oh, hello. Adrian here, too. What has happened to your head? What are those sticks? For. Send for the doctor at once. Have you hurt yourself? Hurt myself? Hurt myself? Has he been run over? This woman has half killed me and she asks me, have I hurt myself? I fell down the whole flight of stairs. My ankle was sprained. My knee was twisted. The small bone of my leg was broken. My spine was ricked. I had to give them a subscription at the cottage hospital where your man took me. I had to go from there to a nursing home. Twelve guineas a week. I had to call in three Harley Street surgeons, and none of them knew anything about dislocated knees. They wanted to cut my knee open. I had to go to a bone setter, and he charged me 50 guineas. Well, why did you not walk downstairs properly? Were you drunk? I... I... Uh, uh, he declares that his injuries oh. were inflicted by you when you last met Mrs Fitzfassenden. Why didn't he? Am I a prize fighter? Am I a coal heaver? Both. Do you deny that you assaulted him? Of course I deny it. Anything more monstrous I have never heard. What happened was he insulted my father grossly. It was most unprovoked. At a moment when I had every reason to expect the utmost tenderness from him, the blood rushed to my head. The next thing I remember was I was lying across the table, trembling, dying. The doctor who found me will tell you what my condition was. I don't care what your condition was. What condition did your chauffeur find me in? He's taking an action against you. Mm. An action? Very well. You know my invariable rule. Fight him to the last ditch, no matter what it costs. Take him to the House of Lords, if necessary. We shall see whose purse holds out the longest. I will not be blackmailed. You think your father's money places you above the law? Again? <laughs> no, 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 none of that, none of that. Toko, my girl, oh, Toko. Toko, what's Toko? Oh, she knows. Toko is an infallible medicine for calming the nerves. You are a, a blow in the solo plexus and a day in bed, that is Toko. You are a witness, Mr. Sagamore, how I go in fear of my husband's brutal violence. He can torture me, batter me, kill me. He is stronger than I am. It is the last argument of the lower nature against the higher. My innocence is useless. Do your worst. 
Mm, quite safe now, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know how I feel. It serves you right. I do not wish to hear any more about Mr. Blender Blender's ridiculous injuries. Now, do be a little reasonable, Mrs. Fitzpatrick, on how we to discuss the compensation due to Mr. Blender Bland without mentioning his injuries. There is no compensation due to Mr. Blender Bland. He deserved what he got, whatever it was. But he will take an action against you. Then take one against him first. What for? Oh, never mind. I don't care. Don't bother me about it. Claim £20,000 damages. I tell you, I will not be blackmailed. Neither will I. I am entitled to compensation, and I mean to have it. You are not. Please. No, I, I cannot advise uh, either of you to go to law. But quite seriously, Mrs. Fitzfasson, Mr. Blenderblad is entitled to some compensation. Oh. Yeah. You can afford it. Mr. Sagamore, a woman as rich as I am cannot afford anything. I have to fight to keep every penny I possess. Every blackmailer, every swindler, every charity, every testimonial, every political cause, every league and brotherhood and sisterhood, every church and chapel, every institution of every kind on earth is busy from morning to night trying to bleed me to death. If I weaken for a moment, if I let a farthing go, I should be destitute by the end of the month. I subscribe one guinea a year to the Income Taxpayers' Defence Fund, and that is all. Absolutely all. My standing instructions to you are to fight every action and to forestall every claim for damages with a counterclaim for 20 times the amount. That is the only way I can write across the sky, hands off my money. You see, Mr. Blender Bland, it's no use. You must withdraw your threat of an action. I won't. You will, you must. Oh, we're wasting time. Give him a ten pound note and be done with it. A ten pound note, oh, Mrs. Fitzfast. Yes, a ten pound note. No man can resist a ten pound note if you crackle it under his nose. But he wants two thousand five hundred. Two? Not a penny less. Adrian, my child, I have underrated you. Your cheek, your gluttony, your obstinacy impose respect upon me. I threw a half-baked gentleman down the stairs and my chauffeur picked him up off the mat, a magnificently complete skunk. Five thousand for that, Sagamore, do you hear? Please, please, do keep your temper. Keep your own temper. Has she lamed you for life? Has she raised a bump on your head? Has she called you a skunk? Mm. No, but she may at any moment. Oh, my Sagamore, my treasure. Shall I give him five thousand on condition he turn it into one million in six months? <laughs> I will do what I like with it. I will have it unconditional. <laughs> uh, Mr. Blunt, Blunt. It's a mistake to go into court in the character of a man who's been called a skunk. It's also very difficult for a plaintiff to get sympathy in the character of a man who's been thrashed by, by a woman. Now, if Mrs. Fitzfasson had stabbed you, or shot you, or poisoned you, that would have been quite in order. So your dignity would not have been compromised. But Mrs. Fitzfasson knows better. She'd come into court, beautifully dressed, looking her best. And long before we can get the case into the lists, the bump on your head will have subsided, your broken bone will have set, and the colour will have come back to your, um, to your cheeks. So, unless you can provoke Mrs Fitzfassenden to assault you again the day before the trial, and she's far too clever for that, the chances are a million to one against you. Yes, Blender Bland, you wouldn't stand a dog's chance. Mm, Alistair's quite right. Ask her nicely, perhaps she'll pay your expenses. <laughs> Is there no justice for a man against a woman? Believe me, no, not against a millionaire. And what justice is there for a millionaire, as I should like to know? Oh, in the courts. I was not talking of the courts. I was speaking of the justice of heaven. Oh, Lord, now we're for it. Alistair, how can you jeer at me? Is it just? Because I am a millionaire, as I cannot keep my husband, cannot keep even a lover, cannot keep anything except my money. There you sit before my very eyes, snuggling up to that insignificant little nothingness who cannot afford her own stockings and... You are happy, and she is happy. Here is this suit of clothes on two sticks. What does it contain? Oh, let me alone, will you? Something that once resembled a man, and something that liked lending me five pound notes and never asked me to repay them. Why? Kindness to me, love of me, no. The swank of a poor man lending to a millionaire. In my divine wrath, I smashed him as a child smashes a disappointing toy. And when he was brought down to his real self, I found I was not a woman to him. I was a bank account with a good cook. That's all very well, dear, but the truth is no one can live with you. And anyone can live with you. And apparently you can live with anyone. Well, what Seedy says is the God's truth. Nobody could live with you. Why? 
Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why? Why?